Welcome to That's Good Sports. I am Brandon. I'm bringing you the top NFL news stories for the week, Perna. This is week one of the football season. No more of this preseason Nick Foles sucks at QB conjecture bullshit. We get real answers. We get real football. But before we get there, you must know what happened in the world of NFL news as we rank all of the news stories here with the secret grading system invented by NASA janitors. Will Keys helps me uh, write these episodes, so make sure you give him a follow on Twitter at WillKeys6. Uh, today, I have seven stories to dissect, from Kaepernick to Jarek McKinnon to QB cuts and moves. That's good sports. If you're new here, please subscribe to this YouTube channel, and we do a weekly podcast every Thursday, iTunes, Podbean, That's Good Sports Podcast, download it, or whatever. Now, my friends from Squad QL are back sponsoring my show. If you play fantasy football and need help managing your team or teams, download the Squad QL app. This fantasy tool, no, not Colton from The Bachelor, gives you an unfair advantage over all of your clueless fantasy opponents. Squad QL can manage multiple leagues from multiple fantasy sites and will set and optimize your lineup with one click of a button. It factors in each different league scoring system. So this is really an awesome tool. The app is so advanced with analyzing fantasy data. It told me not to draft Jarek McKinnon because he would tear his ACL in preseason. Okay, that last one is a lie, but use my link or go to squadql.com to download the app and dominate your fantasy league. Coming in at number seven is Colin Kaepernick, who had a great week. First, his collusion case is not dismissed as the NFL hoped it would be. And then Nike names him the face of their 30th anniversary Just Do It campaign. Not to be confused with Pornhub's Just Do It campaign starring Colin Kaepernick. In addition to running shoes and basketball shoes, Nike will introduce a shoe designed to support excess pressure on one foot for any kneeling situation. Nobody talks about the toll kneeling for uh, a protest takes on your kneeling foot. And it's not just for protesters, which is why I think Nike is gonna make bank. I'm talking kneeling for gardening, kneeling for house cleaning, kneeling at church, and yes, kneeling for blowjobs. Capper Dick knows what I'm talking about. This of course sparked outrage on social media, which led to Nike burning. Not only am I burning my favorite pair of Nikes, you are burning your sales. I think he meant to say Nike sales will be lit because this campaign generated Nike 43 million in media exposure according to at least one pie chart I saw. Personally, I've always been a histogram guy, or at the very least a bar chart man. Pie charts make me hungry, and as long as everyone here can agree, line charts are the worst, we can move on. If you are a line chart lover, well, you can just fuck right off with your stupid lines. The number six, story of the week is a feel good one. Now I know number seven gives some of you mixed feelings and or night terrors, but Seattle. The Seattle Seahawks fifth round draft pick Shaquem Griffin not only made the Seahawks roster, but due to a KJ Wright injury, he should begin the year as a starter for Seattle. Griffin, if you didn't know, had his left hand amputated at the age of four and has played football his entire life with one hand, which makes him better than all of us two-handed people who can't even masturbate with our non-dominant hand. He's basically Ash from Evil Dead of the NFL. And when he gets his chainsaw arm, I hope he goes after Roger Goodell first. Griffin led the team in tackles in their final preseason game against the Oakland Raiders. Griffin looks so good on defense against the Raiders that John Gruden tried to trade him to the Bears. Coming in at number five, 49ers running back Jarek McKinnon tore his right ACL. More like wrong ACL if you ask me. And is out for the year in San Francisco. McKinnon is an early contender for the 2018 Fantasy Drafters Buyer's Remorse Award. If Kyle Shanahan is a true football genius, he will sign D'Angelo Henderson off of the Jets practice squad to replace McKinnon's explosiveness in the passing game. Or, if he's a super football genius, he'll sign veteran free agent kicker Dan Bailey 
and become the first head coach in NFL history to successfully convert a kicker to a starting running back. Now, that would be impressive. Furthering our running back news, Steelers running back Le'Veon Bell still hasn't shown up for practice. At this point, I think it's a safe bet to start running back James Conner if you have him in your fantasy league. Bell is basically the Roseanne of the NFL, about to be replaced by the Connor. S reaching, I'm reaching for that one. Number four, now news just does not get bigger than this. This could be the number one story of the entire year, but former Chargers, Raiders, and Eagles linebacker, Colton Underwood has been named the new star of ABC's The Bachelor. Holy shit! Wow. I mean, the NFL, the news cycle never stops. Colton played in exactly zero NFL games and was cut more times than Jewish baby penises. But this is major football news here on That's Good Sports. To recap Colton's seasons, uh, Colton was basically on Becca's season of The Bachelorette and almost went all the way for the score, but then got ditched cause Tia like still totally had feelings for him and they almost became the real deal on Bachelor in Paradise, but Colton dumped her so he could be the star of his own show. I know what you're thinking. This isn't even football or sports related. And boy, are you dead wrong. The implications will change the world of sports power rankings forever. Colton Underwood now has a chance to become the most popular virgin in all sports surpassing Tim Tebow. I am a virgin. Really? Tebow's reign of terror at the top of Virgin Mountain can finally be usurped by an even wider and prettier muscle boy who couldn't quite cut it in the NFL. To be fair to Tebow, this is his first virgin challenger ever. All other men play sports solely for increasing their chances of getting sex. Coming in at number three is the NFL QB carousel. The Denver Broncos cut former first round draft pick Paxton Lynch. The Buffalo Bills traded AJ McCarron to the Oakland Raiders. The Chargers waived QB Cardale Jones. Uh, the Browns cut Hard Knocks QB refrigerator organizer and butterfly expert Brogan Roback. The Steelers cut Landry Jones. And oddly enough, Brock Osweiler was not cut by the Miami Dolphins. Paxton Lynch's legacy in Denver will always be that he was a first round pick who was beaten out in camp by a seventh rounder three different times. Trevor Simeon twice and Chad Kelly this year. Now I think the most obvious fit for Lynch is Tampa Bay, which is why the Bills were the idiots to first work him out. Not only is Tampa uh, in a dicey QB spot, it's also where Lynch played his first and best game in the NFL, and it's the only stadium with a goddamn pirate ship behind the end zone. If you didn't know, Lynch is famous for looking like a pirate. If things go poorly, Paxton can always captain this ship across the open seas of Tampa, Florida, which is not necessarily a sea of water, but a sea of strip clubs and other adult-themed debauchery. Lynch uh, did work out for the Bills, and it reportedly went well, Paxton was always a great QB though when not throwing against a defense. If Buffalo signs him, Lynch will be the most experienced quarterback on the Bills roster. As if Bills fans needed another excuse to drink heavily in the parking lot before games. The number two story of the week that I already covered in depth in its own video, otherwise it would be number one, is the Oakland Raiders trading away their best defensive player, Khalil Mack, to the Chicago Bears for draft picks. Raiders head coach John Gruden took to the podium on Sunday to explain why they got rid of their best player. And so did uh, Raiders GM Reggie McKenzie. To no one's surprise, they sounded like a couple of sixth graders who couldn't keep their story straight at the principal's office. Let's compare what they said. Reggie McKenzie, Aaron Donald had no bearing on the Mac negotiations. John Gruden, we couldn't match the Aaron Donald deal. Reggie McKenzie, Derek Carr's big contract had no bearing on the Mac negotiations. John Gruden, the economics of two massive contracts on one team couldn't work out. Reggie McKenzie, I drink Coca-Cola for its smooth, delicious taste. John Gruden, I prefer the cool, refreshing taste of Camel cigarettes. There's just no consistency there between head coach and GM. It's almost like they don't even talk to each other. 
And coming in at number one is Seahawks safety Earl Thomas, after Dallas failed to trade for him, has decided to not lose a shit ton of money and play for the Seahawks this season. The good news for Broncos fans is Thomas will not play week one. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders thanks you kindly, Earl. The bad news for Thomas is this photo he posted on Instagram making the announcement and also saying he will not forget everyone who screwed him in Seattle only got 681 likes in four minutes. Earl's popularity may be at an all-time low. That's what happened in the NFL this week. Please check out my prediction episode for the Falcons-Eagles game, the kickoff of the NFL season. Uh, it's gonna go up this evening, hopefully, maybe a little late. Uh, and I need you to like me more than Earl Thomas. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. Subscribe here on YouTube. Share this video with your friends and your enemies and people you just don't really give a fuck about. I'm on Twitter at Brandon Perna, Instagram at Brandon Perna, and football season is about to get so, so delicious. I can taste it.